Wonderful. Congratulations, everyone. We are moving further and further, climbing higher and higher. You already know that the main predestination of a person is to help others. But how? How to help people? Will we all do it the same way, with only one single predestination for all of us? No, of course not. The purpose of helping people manifests through your talent, through your abilities, through your individuality. If you know, in history there were many spiritual masters who led thousands of pilgrims and disciples. Each of them imparted knowledge about God, about love, but each did it in their own way. Not everyone helped people, but everyone did it through their own talent. For example, Buddha followed the path of ascetism. He had a very strong ajna and through concentration and renunciation of desires, Buddha created his teaching and led his disciples along the same path. If we take Christ, then Christ had a very kind and loving heart. His path was the path of love, the path of self-sacrifice. Through this path, he led his disciples, saying that if someone strikes you on one cheek, you should turn the other, thus responding with love to any malice in this world. If we take, for example, Mr. Gurdjieff, then Gurdjieff created entire mysteries, mystical dances. He brought Sufi dances from the East and through this helped his disciples expand their consciousness. Each master carries teachings about God, about self-awareness, about revealing their predestination. But they do it completely differently. Osho was an amazing speaker. This was his gift and talent. He lectured to thousands of people and even after his death we still listen to his lectures and read books written based on his darshans with disciples. This was his gift, the gift of speech. Every talented person who realized their predestination helped people. If we take the great artist Rarick, then through his paintings and great art, he gave birth to the divine, the spiritual, and the sacred in people. Each embodied their predestination and their talent. Blavatsky, knowing how to structure everything and find a scientific approach to any mystical things, wrote many books that are still a guide for many pilgrims. Dear ones, you are undoubtedly born to help people. But how? What is your talent? What is your uniqueness? So, what can you do to grow and move even faster? To climb even higher on the spiritual path towards your dream, the summit, the realization of your great predestination. What will help you? Dear ones, there are two growth factors. Remember them and be sure to write them down. Let's compare the spiritual path with climbing a mountain. Just imagine, you need to climb to the top. But this mountain is steep and very difficult. You can't just walk up it. What will you do? What will you do to be safe and stay alive while reaching the top? I think at the very least, you'd take a length of rope to keep you safe and secure on your climb to the top, right? Additionally, you'd need some insurance from below so that someone can support you and catch you in case of a fall. God forbid, of course, but what if? It's necessary to have a backup. If you're moving upwards, it's great when there's someone above you gradually pulling you up, and someone below you pushing you and helping you climb. You'd agree. Such a climb would be pleasant, fast, and most effective, right? So, dear ones, the spiritual path is the same. Climbing up the mountain to the mountain of your talents, your abilities, your predestination. And at the top of this mountain is the realization of your great mission. But how do you get there? First, you need a master. You need that spiritual mentor who stands there, on top, throwing you down a rope which will help you climb up. The higher your spiritual mentor stands, the higher level of consciousness your master has, the easier and faster it is for you to climb up. Because if you choose a mentor for yourself who may be slightly above you, just one step higher, you'll quickly rise to their level and you'll have to look for the next master. 
Perhaps you've already experienced that when you've moved from one master to another. You understand that here you've already learned everything, outgrown it, that you need to move on, and so from teaching to teaching you go, trying different religions and different forms, but you cannot find yourself in something permanent. You need a high spiritual master who stands at the very top. I was lucky with such a master, and I hope you'll be lucky too. This is the first growth factor. If you want to develop, grow, and unfold super abilities, you need a spiritual mentor. Without this, it's impossible. The second growth factor of your development, which is absolutely necessary on this spiritual path, is... Now what do you think? Correct. Spiritual disciples. Spiritual disciples are those who are below you. You pass on to them the knowledge received from the master and bring it down to their level so that they can understand, accept, and practice at their level. Thanks to this, they will grow and rise higher. But what does that mean for you? Simply put, they push you upwards. Yes, dear ones, your disciples, those to whom you pass on knowledge, are that safety cushion that will not let you fall. The thing is, when you raise someone from your disciples, your followers, those to whom you pass on knowledge, to your level, then, according to cosmic law, you will automatically rise higher. And the more people you have, to whom you pass on energy and knowledge that you have received from your spiritual mentor, the faster you will grow. I hope you've memorized these two important factors. A high spiritual mentor who stands very high, preferably at the very top, and a large number of disciples, those people to whom you pass on knowledge. Then your ascent to your predestination, to your mission, will be swift. You cannot have just one of these. You need both of the factors. Why? Because, dear ones, if you only have a spiritual master, but no disciples to whom you pass on knowledge, then the energy you receive from the master accumulates in you and stagnates. Yes, yes, energy can stagnate too. And the stagnation of energy is one of the worst things that can happen. Imagine, for example, a full flowing river, raging, clean, and powerful. It originates from the top of a mountain where glaciers melt. The purest water descends down the turbulent river, flows through its channel, and flows into the ocean. Dissolving, it feeds the huge ocean with strength and energy. Can you imagine that? And now, Imagine that we've put an obstacle in the way of such a river, an obstacle that will not let this river move further. The water will begin to accumulate gradually and, ceasing to move, will begin to stagnate in this restriction. What will happen to it? Water without movement will begin to tarnish. Water will begin to develop silt. And that pure, beautiful, powerful, turbulent river will turn into a swamp. Even that pure energy of the glacier will turn into silt, foul-smelling, with frogs, reeds, and other inhabitants of the swamp. Such water is not only unpleasant to drink, but even for bathing. Simply touching such water is unpleasant. The same happens to a person who accepts energy, accepts knowledge from a spiritual mentor but does not pass it on further. He turns into a swamp. Some criticism, some doubt arises in him. Negativity begins to arise in him. And he begins to stagnate or smell bad. Если бы я знал, все больше я чувствую, что я в совете словно чужой. Они что-то знают про силу и скрывают это от меня. 
тебе не доверяют, Энакин. Они видят твое будущее, и они знают, что ты обретешь такую мощь, которая им не подвластна. And so this person starts to stink, spreading such an unpleasant scent. And it seems like they have a high spiritual master, but they remain entirely negative. Such cases do occur. Perhaps you've even seen such people. This happens when they do not pass on this knowledge to anyone. And because of their doubts, because of their criticism and negativity, that connection with the master who keeps them balanced, that powerful rope along which the master helps them ascend, it starts thinning and thinning and thinning. Dear ones, doubts destroy our connection with the higher, and gradually, if a person continues to emit negativity, it thins so much that it breaks and the person falls into the abyss at the bottom and shatters. Я победил трое. Вы не нужны мне больше. Я все могу сам. This even happens with monks, with disciples of high spiritual masters, who seem to have been on the path for a long time, but falter and leave the world. Usually it all ends with them either drinking themselves to oblivion, ending up in prison, or experiencing some other negativity. Because if you have a high predestination and you have already found your path, but you deviate from it, life will certainly teach you a lesson. And this lesson, which you will carry along into the next incarnation, and from life to life, you will live through this mistake, trying to redeem your guilt before the spiritual master whom you abandoned. Perhaps some of you watching this video have already had a similar experience. Inside you, there is a craving for the light, there is a craving for the spiritual, but there is also some fear, perhaps awkwardness or even doubt. Perhaps the reason lies there. Насколько древняя? Никто не знает возраст верховного чародея. Известно, что она из кельтов, но о своем прошлом молчит. Ничего о ней не знаешь и учишься у нее. Я знаю, что она постоянно, но непредсказуема. Милостива, но неумолима. Я ей обязан всем. Верю, учителя. И не сходи с пути. Don't worry. On the next individual practice, we'll explain everything and help you find a way out. So, have you understood why it is impossible to move forward having only a spiritual master? Yes, spiritual disciples are necessary. But what will happen if you have people to whom you pass on knowledge, but you do not have a spiritual master? If a person has those whom he teaches, but no one teaches him, sooner or later, egoism grows in this person. He considers himself the best. There's no one above me. I receive knowledge directly from space, the universe, from God and the angels. I know everything, and I will teach all of you. Последние годы так много людей стали безбожниками под влиянием Джебали. Эй, грешник! За твое богохульство Бог тебя покарает! Я же Бог! If a person does not have a spiritual master, he will become a conductor for dark powers. And this happens absolutely always. It is impossible to have disciples under you and to be a pure and open person if there's no one who leads you, who stands above you, because you always have to feel the higher power and have that spiritual mentor who will show you that you are still a small part and are merely a conductor of energy, not letting you become arrogant. This is very important.
прошли. Пройдемся немного. Unfortunately, I have seen so many people who eventually feel so important, so great on their spiritual path, that they think they don't need a spiritual master anymore, that they already know everything themselves and can teach all of us. Now I will pass on knowledge to you, they think. In reality, they leave the spiritual path, but think they're still on it. They believe that by passing on knowledge to people, receiving it from books, from the universe, through meditation, they are passing something onto someone. But in reality, they are passing on those demons that have seized their soul, their heart, and instilled in them egotistical thoughts of arrogance that they can do everything themselves. Unfortunately, even in our school, there were people who strayed from the spiritual path condemned the spiritual mentors who guided them before, and tried to transmit knowledge themselves. This never ends well. Through such people, dark powers operate, but they themselves do not feel it. They think that they are doing everything themselves, and everything will work out perfectly for them. Я могущественнее самого канцлера. Я, я могу его свергнуть. И мы с тобой сможем вместе править галактикой. Все будет так, как захотим мы. In reality, as they try to heal people, they simply take diseases from one person and transfer them to another, because there's no pure source that cleanses them of this negative energy. Do you understand? At their seminars, people can even become seriously ill afterwards. Once, at one such seminar, a disciple attempted to perform a ritual of death, a very powerful ceremony that requires a connection with a high and powerful egregore, a connection that he did not have. After the ritual, one of the women who participated was taken directly to a psychiatric clinic. She simply went mad because of the demons that possessed her through this conductor. Can you even imagine? Unfortunately, there have been even more horrible cases. Like one case, after a bathing ritual, which was supposed to be a healing ritual, a woman's heart simply stopped, and she died right in the middle of a ceremony. Please, be very attentive to those who teach you. You personally, and those who teach you must have spiritual mentors who stand above, those masters who guide you, who do not let you become arrogant, and who help you see yourself realistically and grow. That's why these two factors are important. A spiritually high mentor and spiritual disciples who help you rise. The story of our disciple Laura illustrates very well what I've just told you. Laura has always been a seeking person. From childhood, she felt immense power within herself and knew she had a great predestination. But she didn't know how to manifest this power, how to fulfill her predestination. So, she did everything many people do in search of themselves. She traveled a lot, went to Tibet, lived in a monastery, communicated with Tibetan monks trying to find herself. But even this wasn't enough for her. She went to the Vatican, traveled to Jerusalem, tried to understand and find herself in Christianity. She even danced with the Krishna devotees. In general, Laura tried everything to find her predestination, her recognition, but just couldn't find it. By the way, do you know why the spiritual egregores of Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and Krishnaism are slightly lower than the Sahasrara egregores? That's because, in an egregore where the conductor of ideas has already passed on to the other side, that is, is no longer a living carrier of knowledge, it is considered dead. And all teachings, religious teachings and religious egregores, where there is no living master, simply don't have power. There's no energy in them, and therefore, no living knowledge. That's why Laura, traveling in various directions, could not find a spiritual mentor who would guide her in life until she came to our Sahasrara Egregore. Being with us, 
she found a spiritual mentor who began to help her unlock her abilities. And Laura was a very powerful healer. She knew this, she always felt it. Moreover, she even tried to heal people. But, unfortunately, because she did not have the knowledge of how to heal properly, she, while taking away the illness from one person during a healing session, transferred this illness to another patient. And so it happened that diseases passed from one of her patients to another. She was very frightened and desperate. She even completely abandoned her gift, thinking that she was only harming people and not helping them at all. Laura always felt when a person needed help, but did not know how to properly apply it. When she started studying with us and came to seminars, Laura finally felt the power, felt that she had made a connection with someone at the very top of the mountain, someone who could elevate her to her predestination. She was thrilled with everything. She admired the books we have because these books cannot be bought anywhere in any store and they contain absolutely unique knowledge. The music of transformation, which performs a real transformation inside, has a healing effect on everyone who listens to it. In general, Laura was learning all the mysteries possessed by our school and unlocking her abilities. She was beside herself with happiness. And of course, soon she received a recommendation to pass on this knowledge to other people to transmit to them the knowledge and energy she receives. At first, Laura was against it, so frightened by her past experiences when she tried to heal people. She said she would never heal anyone again. All right, you may choose not to heal. Healing is indeed dangerous without initiation into spiritual healing. This is a special initiation given to chosen individuals. They must go through many trials and cleanse themselves fully to acquire this gift. We suggested simply leading yoga sessions, organizing wellness groups, jogging, teaching people to eat properly, completely harmless things, but so, so important for everyone. And Laura started doing just that. She began leading a wellness group in her city. And guess what? Her disciples started to grow. She started with 10 people, then 20, then 50. She had a group of 100 people. Can you imagine? And when she organized her first seminar, one of the strongest masters of our school came to it. It was a shamaness, a very powerful healer. She took Laura as her disciple. Laura began traveling with her, learning, and now she has fully unlocked her gift and herself is a spiritual mentor of our school. Perhaps some of you know her very well. Now she truly heals people using special rituals doing everything according to the rules of spiritual healing, helping them cope even with the most complex and, as doctors say, incurable diseases. But there is nothing impossible. Dear ones, in your hands is a miracle, energy with which you can work wonders. To do this, you just need to unlock this energy and power, and we are here to help you with this. Remember, dear ones, to grow and move forward, you definitely need a spiritually high-level mentor and those people to whom you pass on knowledge. To pass on knowledge, you need to go through special training with us, training that we conduct specifically at off-site retreats or places of power, where you will receive a certificate that you have the right to transmit energy and knowledge according to our methods. We even have special courses that you can teach. These are various courses on women's knowledge, shamanic knowledge, various mysteries and rituals. In general, you will learn everything when you come to our seminars. And now, we will practice together. A practice that will help you feel the power of a spiritual mentor. This is a special meditation, an ancient meditation performed by the closest disciples of great masters. If you have the right to meditate on the portrait of your master, it means you are a very important and valuable disciple for him, whom he leads and raises on the path of development 
up the ladder of spiritual growth to the very top. I suggest you perform the following practice. First, choose a portrait of a holy person with whom you feel a connection, someone close to you, someone with whom you would like to establish contact. It could be Jesus Christ, it could be Osho, Buddha, Kalki, Zoroaster, Gurdjieff, any mentor and spiritual master from whom you want to receive silent knowledge and energy. Have you decided who it will be? Now, please turn on the music of transformation. We've attached it to this lesson. You can use it right now. While playing this music, put the portrait of this great master in front of you at a distance of two meters so that it is at your eye level and his gaze at the level of your brow. Place this portrait so that you can sit in front of it with a straight spine. If it's difficult for you to sit with a straight posture, you can sit leaning against something behind you, but ideally, your spine, your aharata column, on which all chakras are anchored, should be straight so that the energy of the great master will transmit to you and fill all your chakras. All you need is the music of transformation and a private, well-ventilated room. You can light incense or fill the room with a scent that is pleasant to you. And for the next 10 minutes, meditate. Look into the eyes of the master and perform slow, deep breathing. For seven pulses, you inhale. For seven pulses, you exhale. You can feel your pulse here on the wrist or on the carotid artery. Perhaps you will simply feel the beating of your heart and will breathe in unison with the rhythm of your heartbeat. Are you ready to start? Start this practice and perform this meditation every day for 21 days. And you will see how the holy energy of this great person will fill you as if you were an empty and hungry vessel with life-giving energy and silent knowledge, understanding of how you need to move along your path of spiritual growth, how you need to realize your mission and your predestination. Having filled yourself with this light and this energy, come to us for classes, come to us for special training, and become our representative in your city. Conduct courses specially designed according to ancient methods and knowledge that are available only to a few, and soon will be available to you. See you soon! If you enjoyed this video, then give a cheerful like and share it with those who might be interested. This will be your gratitude for the knowledge you have gained. We will be honored. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We intend to delight you with new videos and convey truly invaluable knowledge. Don't miss them and hit the bell to be the first to seize the chance to change your life for the better. extreme times when the fate of the entire planet is at stake. It is crucial for the knowledge of angels and benevolent spirits to spread as quickly as possible, globally, and reach thousands of people. In this way, we can change the future of all humanity. Which is why we are addressing you, dear soul of light. Spread the knowledge about our wise books and films. Share links to videos or cartoons. All of this is available and free.
invite women to individual practices, webinars, and seminars. And the Great Spirit of Light will help you and your family. It will direct an enormous amount of energy to fulfill all your desires. Benevolent spirits and angels will assist you and your loved ones in all matters. A thread of light and love extends from your heart to the hearts of thirsty women. And the creation of good and the dissemination of enlightened knowledge throughout the world begins. Become part of the mission of light. Help people and God will help you.